Good morning, everyone. Hi, I'm Rick Ebert, president of Pennsylvania Farm Bureau, the largest farm organization in the state representing more than 62,000 members. Several hundred of our members are in the Capitol today, meeting with representatives and senators from both parties. Among the issues they are discussing is the need for further investment in broadband infrastructure in rural Pennsylvania. Due to the lack of high-speed internet service, rural Pennsylvania is falling behind more populated areas in our state. Yet the need for the tools and services provided by the internet is not dependent on a person's zip code. Today's ever-evolving technology and the push towards more online services is happening regardless of whether you live in our smaller communities or a major, major or urban area. Many of our farm families take advantage of online, can't take advantage of online banking, tax software, or the revolution of telemedicine, simply because they lack rural broadband. Our farmers are small business owners, and the technology they use for many facets of their business is run through high-speed internet. You will hear in a few minutes from two of our farmers about how their businesses are hampered because of lack of connectivity. I can also speak to that because in my barn, if I need to get a hold of my veterinarian, I actually have to go away from my barn uh, and then stay outside instead of taking care of my animals. Or also if I need parts for machinery, I have to go somewhere where I have service to get a hold of because machinery dealers really don't stock parts anymore and if I miss an opportunity to get something shipped, I may have to wait a few days to even get my parts that I need. The lack of investment in high-speed internet service is not simply a, a matter of convenience or entertainment for rural families. Some students are not able to complete online homework assignments at their houses and our farmers cannot take advantage of the precision ag tools available. We are a technology-driven world, and agriculture is no exception. But if the backbone of infrastructure of our service is not available, farm and rural families are left behind. The need for high-speed internet service to be available to residents across the state now is akin to the desire for all Pennsylvanians to have electricity available in their rural homes a century ago. Broadband is becoming an infrastructure necessity in that very same way. We are thankful to have representatives Kristen Phillips-Hill, Pam Snyder, and Marty Cosner are all showing leadership on this issue. We are also thankful for Governor Tom Wolf for making rural broadband a priority. We know the solutions are not easy, and then it will take a concerted effort by private companies and state agencies to achieve this goal. Farmers across the Commonwealth are calling on lawmakers to get behind this legislative effort and to look for other solutions. We know that not one single piece of legisl legislation will solve it, but will take a multifaceted approach in the House and Senate to move all of Pennsylvania into the 21st century. Now I'd like to introduce our speakers who have demonstrated strong leadership on bringing the issue of rural broadband to the attention of lawmakers and other stakeholders in the state. Please welcome Representative Christine Phillips-Hill to the podium. Christine. Thank you, Rick, and thank you to the Farm Bureau and our colleagues that are here joining us today. Um, good morning. I'm Representative Kristen Phillips-Hill, and I represent the 93rd District in Southern New York County. So, why did the farmer put a Fitbit on his cows? It's really not a riddle, but there is more than one answer. I can easily head home, write down Interstate 83 to the 93rd Legislative District, and find a farmer who can tell what's going on with a cow simply by looking in her eyes. But there is no denying that artificial intelligence has infiltrated the family farm. 
You might say that it started in the late 20th century with automated milking machines. And in the 21st century, it's called IDA, which is an acronym for Intelligent Dairy Farmers Assistant. It's a system of monitoring diet, movement, and health concerns, a Fitbit for cows, if you will. IDA depends on a reliable wireless networking system. Years ago, the promise of access to statewide broadband internet was made, but not kept. The problem was brought to my attention a few years ago when I first took office, and I discovered that Southeastern New York County School District students were being driven to school property after hours to access the district's Wi-Fi. Perfectly legal, but definitely inconvenient and unacceptable. You see, they couldn't complete their homework assignments because they could not access high-speed internet at home. And it was not for a lack of effort. We can and we must do better. It didn't take long to learn living in an unserved and underserved area with no access to the internet isn't strictly an education issue. And when it came to examining and solving the problem, instead of simply just throwing money at it, I found a great partner who's going to speak to you in a little bit, in Democrat State Representative Pam Snyder, who's been doing a tremendous job for the residents of the far southwest corner of Pennsylvania. She's going to be updating you on the progress of our four-bill package of legislation, which is on the move right now here in the House of Representatives. Bringing broadband to unserved and underserved regions of our state is more than just synchronizing self-driving vehicles with intersections and each other. It's about the school student who can't do his or her homework at home. It's about the cardiac patient who wants to check their pacemaker's performance on a smartphone. It's about our emergency responders in the field trying to respond to calls, both relying on Wi-Fi in a life or death situation. It's about the entrepreneur who just wants to realize the dream of owning their own business. It's about our farmers who want to access markets and products. And today, it really is about that farmer on whom we depend for so much just wanting to remain profitable in a very challenging market, who wants to feed his or her family and ours, who wants to keep up with technology and listen to their cows. So thank you so much for being here today. It's very exciting to know that in Pennsylvania, which is the most rural state in the nation, we have more people living in rural areas than any other state, that all parties are engaged at the table and looking for real solutions to this challenging problem. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kristen. I'd like to note that this is a bipartisan effort, and our next speaker, Representative Pam Snyder, has been equally aggressive in supporting efforts to improve and expand rural broadband across the state. Representative? Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much for being here. You just heard my good friend and my colleague, Representative Phillips Hill. She and I have led this two-year effort to bring high-speed internet to unserved and underserved rural areas, to help bring modern broadband to the 800,000 who currently lack it, 520,000 of whom live in rural areas. We have introduced a four-bill package to accomplish that goal. We are pleased the two components of that package were moved out of committee just last week. Let me brief you on the movement of our legislation. House Resolution 431, which calls for an audit of the state's Education Technology Fund, a six-year education technology program financed by non-rural telecommunications carriers, was approved by the House Education Committee. We want to make sure that this program is operating as intended. The goal is to have this program audited by State Auditor General Eugene DePasquale, 
who would report his findings to the General Assembly. House Resolution 429, which would establish a legislative task force on the delivery of high-speed broadband services, was similarly approved by the House State Government Committee. This resolution also directs the Joint State Government Commission to create an advisory committee to conduct a broadband availability study and report its findings back to the House of Representatives. As with House Resolution 431, we are hopeful that House Resolution 429 will soon move to the next step of the process, a vote before the full House. We think these are very important steps to assess the status of broadband service in areas of our great state that are lagging in its availability. Our bipartisan effort includes two other legislative prongs. One is House Resolution 430, which directs the Joint State Government Commission to conduct an in-depth investigation and audit into the compliance of non-rural telecommunication carriers and report its findings and recommendations to the legislature. This resolution is currently before the House Consumer Affairs Committee. The other is House Bill 1642, which directs the Department of General Services to conduct an inventory of all State Department agency, commission, or institution-owned communication towers, pole buildings, and facilities. The goal of this bill is to see if and where we can leverage existing state-owned assets for the provisioning of high-speed broadband internet to unserved and underserved areas. Although this bill is currently before the House State Government Committee, one encouraging example of how this would work was revealed on March 19th when Representative Phillips Hill and I were invited to an announcement by the governor. At that event, we learned of his plan to make available through PennDOT $35 million of incentive funding to expand broadband internet to help the agency fulfill its strategic goal of building a modern communications network along roadways, right-of-ways, and intersections, and furthering connections between all its facilities. The build-out that could occur as a result of this initial state investment could help bring high-speed internet to areas that currently lack it, which is one way to accomplish our mission. Representative Phillips Hill and I were also pleased at that same event that the governor an announced the formation of the Pennsylvania Office of Broadband Initiatives, which will be responsible for developing and executing a statewide strategy to expand access to every Pennsylvanian by the end of 2022. With the help of all of our allies, such as those present today, including the Pennsylvania Farm Bureau, we're confident of achieving our goal of making sure no area misses out on a prosperous future because of inferior internet access. Our legislation and this initiative is about agriculture. It is about jobs. It is about educating our children. It is about educating adults who want to take, who want to take online classes. It is about economic development. These initiatives are about helping every person in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Thank you very much. Thank you, Representative Snyder. Next up is Representative Martin Cosner, who is chair of the State Agriculture and Rural Affairs Committee. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here with you, and I want to thank uh, President Ebert and everyone from the Farm Bureau for their leadership on this issue. Um, also want to recognize the, the great work by colleagues, Representatives Phillips Hill and Snyder, uh, for all the work that they've put into this. And, you know, broadband connectivity is, is not a luxury. It's a necessity. It's, it's a necessity for farmers and for agricultural operations. It's a necessity for students and teachers and hospitals and healthcare facilities. Unfortunately, rural Pennsylvania has been left behind by a lot of the large uh, service providers, and we look to change that. And we all know that when farmers get involved in issues, they get, they get, to, they get taken care of. As chairman of the House Agriculture and Rural Affairs Committee, I've been working on this issue, and a few months ago, attended a conference at the White House on this topic the White House staff at that meeting talked at length about efforts at the federal level to try to tackle this issue. And 
The president had just signed an executive order bringing focus to this issue. The White House staff is talking about specific infrastructure funding, uh, part of which could be used for rural broadband service. And it was very clear to me that we can make progress on this issue by working together, all levels of government, private industry, service providers. And the key, I think, is going to be coordination and resources. And make no mistake, it's going to take a lot of resources. But if we're coordinated in our approach, I think that we will be successful. The governor, to his credit, has allocated $35 million from PennDOT to this effort. I certainly commend him for that. And I'm currently drafting legislation that I believe will assist in coordinating and spearheading broadband development focused on the most rural, underserved communities in Pennsylvania. I look forward to working uh, to introduce th this bipartisan piece of legislation very soon with uh, co-sponsors from all across the state, and I pledge to continue working with uh, my colleagues to tackle this very important issue, and I can tell you it's going to be great to be working with Farm Bureau uh, because the leadership from Farm Bureau will be very helpful in helping us address and tackle this challenge. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Marty. Now I'd like to introduce two farmers who have serious challenges running their businesses with limited and unreliable internet access on their farms. First up is Bethany Corson, who is a dairy farmer from Center County. Bethany. Thank you for the opportunity um, to speak today. My husband and I uh, milk 60 cows in Center County, about 25 miles outside of State College. Um, and we do that using a robotic milker. Um, three years ago, when we started this process, um, we put a ridiculous amount of time into researching. And the one thing that never came up was the lack of high-speed internet that we would need to run this machine. So after investing a considerable amount of time and money into getting our project done, a week before startup, um, the technicians came in and informed us that the satellite internet that we use would not be fast enough to run our robot. So we were kind of dead in the water trying to figure out how to proceed from there. Um, what we came up with was kind of a hodgepodge of things, which is um, ridiculously expensive and not convenient and uses a lot of data um, and is sketchy at best because if it's cloudy or snowing or there are too many leaves on the trees, we lose signals and aren't able to do what we need to do. Um, so basically what we're losing out on is we've got this fantastic piece of technology that is able to give us all the data that we need. Um, we've got the Fitbit. So uh, we have this data at our hands and we aren't able to access it unless we are literally standing right in front of the machine and looking at it. Um, one of the selling points was to be able to access into that and be able to look at that wirelessly from anywhere. Um, we're also losing out on valuable technical support. Um, the company, under normal circumstances, is able to beam in, if you will, at any point and work through any sort of technical issues before they would have to actually have a service call where we are, you know, paying a technician to travel to the farm and, and actually work on that. Um, we have struggled to be able to deal with the remote technicians because they have a hard time getting onto our system and staying on. Um, our data doesn't allow appropriate updates. Um, and because of sketchy service with our cell phones, a lot of times even when we're trying to do our own troubleshooting, it becomes an issue because um, we have to move to a better spot to get a better signal or, you know, we can't be in the barn, we can't be here or there. So um, the challenges are definitely um, far beyond just, my kids would really like to watch Netflix. Um, you know, it, it is an issue, and the technology that is being created and, and on the market for us is fantastic. Unfortunately, we're being hampered by our ability to use that because we don't have the internet we need to, to keep these systems online and updating and do what they're supposed to do to really be beneficial to us. Um, so, you know, obviously this is a big issue. It, it challenges us in our abilities to be competitive with 
other farms. Um, and it, it's just frustrating, frankly. Um, so, you know, it would be great if we, if we were able to, to get to a point where we can, we can compete like everybody else. So thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing your story, Bethany. And now our final speaker is York County poultry farmer, Corey Grove. Corey. Good morning, and thank you for this opportunity to, to come in front of you and, and speak about the issues that we have in uh, southeastern York County. Uh, my, my family's farm is located in the south uh, central or southeastern part of York County, and we're really feeling the impacts of the digital divide. Uh, my house is located a half a mile uh, up the road from our family's farm where I do have decent, okay internet uh, coverage that comes uh, from an antenna through line of sight. And obviously that comes uh, along with all kinds of issues in our area with all the rolling terrain and hills that we, we have in, in our area. Um, so at the, our farm, we're currently uh, limited to whatever the, the local phone service provides, which is very sketchy and very, uh, uh, can be super slow at times. Um, uh, just recently, my wife and I became chicken farmers. We built a cage-free layer house, and our layer house is controlled by a computer that is continuously monitoring the climate in the house, whether it's the water usage or feed consumption, uh, the temperature, all the, the ventilation, all of that is being monitored by this computer. And our, our poultry, our, our layer house is located down at our family's farm, which I said before is, is down the road from our house. And unfortunately, at this time, I can't connect to that computer where I could easily take my smartphone, be able to pull it up, and be able to see what exactly is going on right now, right, right here. Uh, the problem becomes when something goes wrong and there's an alarm. Uh, for instance, yesterday, I work off the farm full time, and I was with a client, and I was an hour away from home. And my phone rings as when there's an alarm, it pushes it through a phone dialer and calls and says alarm zone two, which is the computer system that is alarming. And it could be a, a mirage of different, different things. And I mean, it, it picks up very subtle uh, changes within the whole uh, system, within the whole layer barn, whether it's a, a feed motor, and which actually ended up being, it was uh, the feed bin had clogged up. But I didn't know that at the time. I had to call my uh, father-in-law to go over and check to find out what was going on, which was a, quite an inconvenience. Uh, as you can imagine. Uh, whereas if we had a high-speed internet connection, I'd have been able to pull my phone right out then and see exactly what the issue was and then be able to uh, assist and give further guidance uh, to my father-in-law to know exactly uh, what to, what to uh, take care of it. Um, and I mean, there's many other issues that, that come about. I mean, it could be a water line that breaks and continuously flows and I would be able to know exactly then before I even get to the barn, where the water, what, what room the water line is broken and flowing and, and those types of things. And a really cool thing about it is I can make those changes right off my phone if I wanted to change the ventilation, uh, provide, especially with Pennsylvania weather, uh, we go from having the heat on in the morning to the air conditioning in the afternoon. Uh, the, 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 my, my chickens, they, they gotta have a, a good uh, constant airflow uh, and, and I would be able to make those changes rather than trying to watch the weather forecast and, and try to gauge off of that. Um, and as well as while we're working in the field, being able to, to make those adjustments as well. And as we've mentioned before, today agriculture has become heavily dependent upon technology and that helps us to be better managers of our farms, uh, farm operations and better stewards of our land. As we move towards the future, reliable and high-speed internet is one of the tools that will make Pennsylvania agriculture thrive. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Corey. At this time, I'd like to open the news conference up for any questions that anybody would like to have. Any questions? Seeing none, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out today's news conference on uh, the need for rural broadband internet service uh, for the agriculture community and, and for Pennsylvania. Thank you.